Who has or had it better? Boomers or millennials? It's the generational war that won't stop raging, and Owen Jones and Dawn Neeson debated the topic on Good Morning Britain. Boomers felt optimistic. Everything we were getting was a positive for us because we'd started off from a low base after the war years, um, whereas millennials are starting off from a high base. So everything they are expecting, it's, it's slightly entitled. Sorry, Owen. Oof. Um, I know, I know. I'm not going to call you a snowflake like that, but you're slightly entitled. So, But because you're starting off from that high base, you feel disappointed with everything you're getting. I think, you know, I think basically every generation has faced challenges and we're not really comparing like with like, are we? I mean, the difference is the attitude. I said, we expected nothing so everything we got was a bonus mm. millennials expect everything so everything is a disappointment millennials wow. born between 1980 to 1995 i'm a geriatric millennial that's the 84. i was gonna say that you're hanging on by my aging fingernails you're the entitled generation no, Owen. i think that's unfair i'll give you one basic reason so half of baby booners own their own home by the age of 30 for millennials it's 30 percent. it's not because millennials are spending all their money on cappuccinos or netflix it's just one basic statistic. 40 years ago, the average home cost three times the average salary. It's now eight and a half times the average salary. Now, it, it, just housing costs, mm -hmm. you spend far more as a percentage of your income, even if you're a private renter. And one of the reasons for that is, take right to buy, mm -hmm. lots of homes were flogged off but not replaced. 40% of the council homes that got flogged off under right to buy and are let out by buy to like landlords. And they're charging twice the rent. Mm. So if you're a millennial, you don't get council housing. Don't even think about it. You'll be stuck on a waiting list until you're probably actually in your retirement. You, you can't get a home often because house prices are so, are so expensive. But the other thing is the private rental sector is a ripoff. It's, you're it's, paying huge amounts of your wage packet on private rents. Yeah. And you've, you've made one other point, which I think is really important, and that's how things seem to be getting better. We've gone through the longest squeeze in wages since the defeat of but Napoleon, long before us. you were born, <laughs> at the Battle of Waterloo. First of all, Owen, doesn't it? He just looks better and better. He was, I think, a few years ago. GQ called him the ninth worst dressed man in Britain. Now he's got a suit, T-shirt, chain. Real glow up. Well done. Who's right, though? We're here to talk about the issues, not the fashion sense. Owen was certainly correct on the home ownership point. So this chart from the Times shows what proportion of each generation owned a home by any given age. In the orange are boomers. So that's people born between 1946 and 1964. As you can see, they became homeowners pretty young. So half of boomers own their own home by the age of 29. That sounds quite incredible now. In the dark red are millennials, so people born between 1981 to 1996, so I am one of those. Only 27% of millennials owned a home aged 29, and it's not until age 36 that the majority of millennials became homeowners. So I suppose I still have some hope, maybe in three years' time, I will myself be one. It seems a little bit dubious at the moment. What about Dawn Neeson's point about expectations about what life should be like, though? Well, on that front, this chart might support her point. So it shows what proportions of people's income were spent on different goods and services over time. So as you can see, between 1960 and 2010, housing costs have gone up. We can see well that would be the case. Rents have gone up. The cost of buying a house has gone up. But also, so has the proportion of people's incomes going on leisure activity. And as you can see, that's partly because food has got a lot cheaper. Now, obviously, food between last year and this year has got massively more expensive because we've had short-term inflation. That's been a big problem for people who have been budgeting for food as it has cost over the past 20 years. People aren't used to seeing the price of a particular good go up by 15, 20, 30 percent in, in a year. So that's why it's caused massive problems for people today. But over the long term, food, which is obviously you know, one of the big essential items, massively gone down in price. And what has happened is that people are spending a lot more money on leisure than they used to. So I suppose when people say we had it so hard in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s, you guys have it great now. One of the things they might be talking about is that people spend more money in this day and age on leisure goods, having a good time, than they do on the essentials for life. So when they say we used to have it so hard, you have it so good, maybe that's what they mean. One thing to note, though, those stats I just showed you aren't broken down by age. So it's over time, not by age, not by generation. And it does seem to be older generations who are taking most advantage of a boom in the leisure industry. So in 2002, it was under 49s who spent the most on restaurants and hotels. By 2022, it was 50 to 64-year-olds 
who spent the most on those two luxury items. So again, this kind of makes sense to me. So in general, we spend a lot more, or the population at large, spend a lot more on leisure and luxury items than they used to. That does make some sense to me, this idea that in general, we now all spend a bit more on leisure activities than, than people used to in the 1960s. I should say again, it's kind of odd having this conversation in the, the moment where we have this real cost of living crunch, because I know there'll be lots of people watching this thinking, I am not spending any money on leisure activities at the moment, because we have inflation at 10, 15%. We are in a cost of living crisis. But again, we're looking at the long durée. So in general, over the past 20 or so years, people have spent a lot more on leisure than people did in the 60s and the 70s. That's why you might get older people sort of saying, it was not like this in our day. In our day, we didn't get to get takeaways once a week or go to the pub all the time. Those are all special occasions. Um, this has completely changed now. At the same time, who are the people who are sort of driving this big boom in entertainment consumption, let's say, or leisure consumption? It is in part people who are over 50, probably because their houses have increased in value, so they're feeling fairly well off. I mean, of course, the Navarra media position, which I completely concur with, the struggle is between classes, not generations, but there are interesting divides, especially when it comes to property. How do we resolve this? Wages should go up. The price of houses should go down, please. But we need a society which is less based on what wealth you have, what wealth you are sitting on, and more based on how hard you work, right? Not that, I mean, obviously I want a four day week, I work a four day week, but how good a job you do, not how lucky you were in terms of what house you bought, when and where.